And now today we are down on the coastline of South Shields. It's a beautiful place to do a van tour. So first of all, let's just have a quick look inside and then I'll explain everything in detail. Uh, let me tell you what this van is. It's a 2015 um, Vauxhall Vivaro long wheelbase. It's done 123,000 miles. It has a full service history. It's been serviced on the button all the way and clean MOTs all the way. It's in for a new MOT tomorrow and I'm sure that one will be fine as well. So let me just show you around the outside of it. Getting back to the cab, um, the seats are in really good nick, um, there's no splits, no ingrained dirt or anything like that going on here. I don't think this has ever been a builder's van. Um, I believe it was owned by a leasing company and thus has been rigorously maintained. Right, that's the outside in the cab. I'm going to get in and I'm going to talk, th talk you through what we've actually done here and um, we'll take a look at the various components and elements as we go. All right, so starting from the very beginning, um, those who have been following the build series, thank you very much for watching, by the way, um, will know that the first thing that we did here, really the first major change which happened in the van was putting the side windows in. There are two windows. One is an opening window over the hob, and the other is a fixed window on the sliding door. The very next thing that I did with the van was put the solar panel on. I wanted to get all of the external work done first. And this is a 100 watt solar panel. And this feeds into a charge controller and keeps the leisure battery topped up. On a beautiful sunny day like today, that'll be whacking the amps into the battery. After that, after having completed that, the next thing that I moved on to was the insulation. So the van is very well insulated. It has, I think it's 50 mil, shredded up bottles in all of the panels. A little bit thinner material on the ceiling. Same type of stuff though. And the floor, I went for a closed cell foam, which is sticky back that's been stuck down to the floor. And then we have a subfloor, which is, I believe it was an 11, 11 mil OSB 3, a moisture resistant OSB. And on top of that, we have the uh, laminate flooring which is, I believe, a medium oak. I think that's what they call this. And once all of that um, basic sort of beginning work was done, we moved on to the electrics. Now, let me explain to you what we've got going on here so far as the electrics go. I have a 130 amp hour leisure battery in here, which is fed by the solar panel and also fed from the starter battery. This van has a smart alternator, so you can't use just the normal split relays. What I have in here, though, is a DC to DC charger, which um, will obviously cut out. It won't drain the uh, starter battery, but once the starter battery is fully topped up, it will start feeding into the leisure battery. So the leisure battery is powered by the uh, van when it's running through the, through the starter battery. It's powered by the solar panel, and there's also a mains hookup in here, which has an AC to DC charger. So if you were hooked up on a campsite, for instance, that will charge the battery also, you know, on an evening if there's no sun and if the van isn't moving. There'll still be power going into it if you're on a hookup in a campsite. Now, the, the electrics are spread out throughout the van. What we have at the very front here is the battery box. And in here we have the battery, we have the breaker fuses, and we have the charge controller. This is a ring automotive charge controller. It takes the power from the battery and it also takes the power from the solar panel and feeds that into the leisure battery. So that's one unit instead of many different little units. The one unit sort of handles that all. And it seems to be very good. Now, so far as the outlets, power outlets in the van, we have this uh, five, five switch panel, which also has uh, two USB ports and a 12 volt port and a battery condition um, indicator. On the other side, we have another two USB ports and another 12 volt outlet. We have a reading light at the back. We have six LEDs in the ceiling. 
and we have the fridge and the water pump and that's about it so far as the electrics go. Again I didn't put a inverter in here because there's nothing really that I would use that I would need to use um, that would require an inverter. Uh, using the laptop you can do that through the 12 volt sockets. Um, charging up batteries, phones, lap, whatever. Most of this can be done through USB and 12 volt inlets these days. Although as I say there is a double 240 volt uh, socket and that will become live when hooked up to the shore power sort of thing. We'll have a consumer unit in the back again when hooked up to the shore power will power the 240 volts and it will power the AC to DC charger. Okay so moving right along um, we have the kitchen area of the van and for the kitchen area there's a few things here to mention. Um, First of all, the fridge, it's a 50 litre, 12 volt fridge uh, by Alpicool, an Alpicool fridge. I believe these are made by DG, uh, the Alpicool range. I, th I think that's correct, don't quote me, I think that's correct. But anyhow, it's a 50 litre, 12 volt fridge. It has a freezer compartment, um, very easy to operate, uh, you can adjust the temperature up and down. A little bit of hum when it first starts up until it gets down to temperature, but it also has a... Um, an eco mode which you can use on an evening or night time where it'll knock the amount of power going into the fridge down quite a bit and thus it'll cut the hum down as well. For the hob and sink I went for the uh, Smev 9222. Uh, this again is a standard in these type of vans really and it's a very nice unit. It um, has obviously the glass uh, heat shield thing and splash shield and I've put that on the opening window side so there's a little bit of ventilation. Uh, whilst cooking. As part of the kitchen underneath here we have a, a sealed gas locker with a gas dropout and we have a um, 10 litre freshwater tank and we have a 10 litre wastewater tank and that fits snugly under the uh, hob, under the SMEV thing. Now another point in a van of this size is storage obviously and this very much links in with the cabinet making and the furnishings of the van. The very first piece of uh, cabinet making there is the battery box and as we come along from that we've seen underneath the cupboard where we have the um, the gas locker and uh, water tanks. Next to that we have three drawers which open all the way. The full length drawers are uh, the full length of the unit we've just missed the wheel off which is good and along from that we have this detachable panel which is indeed a locker. It's a locker space so you can get a duvet in there. Um, and that's still accessible when the bed is folded out, which I'll show you in a moment. Along from that we have the tambour door and we have this large um, cupboard which has a shelf in it. Uh, so there's access to this top area by the tambour door itself and there's also access to it from behind the van and we can get the lower part of the cupboard from the door behind the van. That's where the uh, fuse box and uh, consumer unit and uh, stuff like that is. We also have a space underneath the uh, seat and in there right now I've stored the table um, but there's still lots more space in there. Uh, you could get deck chairs, clothing, many things in there. So there's quite a bit of storage space in here really. Um, there's massive space underneath the front seat as well uh, which you could put boxes, uh, foodstuffs, um, quite a bit of storage for a van of this size. Now the cupboards themselves, the cupboards and the furniture are um, frame built. Uh, this is not like a uh, flat pack material, this is uh, sort of hand built cabinet structures in here. Uh, they're very sturdy, very strong and there's not a squeak from them. Uh, when driving along the only couple of little squeaks I'm hearing are from some components on the rock and roll bed which just need a little tightening up I think. But so far as the furniture goes itself not a squeak. The, as I say the the van has a table which uh, fits to this rail here along the side of the worktop and it stores underneath the bed. Now I've carpeted the uh, place where it stores and I've put a couple of chocks in just to stop it from moving around. The table is simplicity itself to set up. Now if we just close that door, uh, the leg folds down and the table clips on the side. There it is. Now obviously you can move this uh, along further if you're doing some uh, prep work in the kitchen 
or you can move it back uh, for eating and working on a laptop or whatever else you might do on the table. Now I went for the rock and roll bed in this van and uh, this is a very nice bed by the way. It doesn't have the little seat at the back. I wanted to leave as much floor space as I possibly could here. Uh, so I went for just the three section. It's a three section bed. There's one at the back, the then the back of the seat and then the seat. And that all folds down into a bed. It actually ends up about uh, one meter ninety five long, I think, which is I think that's over six feet. And the width of it, again, I, th I think it came out at about one hundred and nineteen centimeters, um, which again is a fair size bed for a van of this size. There's a couple of considerations that you have to make to get it around the pillars and stuff like that, but it's a very nice bed, very comfortable, and um, very easy to operate. Okay, so in the seating position, there it is. It has a little release catch here, which you've got to make sure is pushed back into the thing and it has a clip here. Uh, open the clip. I found it best to kneel on the bed and then just push it down. And there it is. That's a fairly smooth and straightforward operation. Let's have a look at it. You still have access to all of these uh, drawers, access to the hob, access to the fridge, access to the cupboard, the tambour door cupboard, to the USB sockets. There's a cushion which fits in this void here. I had to make that. I had to make a cutout in the cushion just to get it around the pillar, so we could get it as far back as possible. Um, but there's a cushion which fits in there, so when that's in, it's pretty much a flat surface bed. Uh, quality. Now to put it back up, again simplicity itself, if I stand this down, you see this a little catch here and essentially you just pull the catch, give it a little push and it sorts itself out. So really the only other thing to discuss, talk about here is the aesthetics of the van which I think are very important. Um, what I've gone for here is instead of putting the battens down the wall and then just cladding over the whole thing, I've done recessed panels uh, with this contrasting carpet between them. The panels themselves are cladding, uh, which has been whitewashed and then rubbed back. It's sort of a driftwood, limed sort of effect. Now, I struggled to get the paint to match the uh, exposed wood colour. Um, but I think we've got a fairly good match there and that all looks good and this all goes together very nicely with these little uh, brown handles, the worktop and the floor contrast with this. The material for the uh, rock and roll bed and for the bulkhead curtains which I'll show you in a moment um, is a tweed, it's, uh, it's called a Cromwell tweed. Um, it's fairly expensive but I think it was worth it. I think it suits the van very well, um, suits the rest of the colour scheme in here and it's all very nice. It's a very pleasant van. It's, it feels very open and um, light, you know. So that's about it for the van tour. Um, I like this van a lot. It's got a lot of space in it for a small van. I mean, it's a long wheelbase van, but it's a Vivaro long wheelbase, so it's not like a massive sprinter van or anything like that. Um, but it is very spacious. It does feel very open. Nice. Can I just say for those who have been following the build series, uh, the rest of the build I will be putting up each week and um, and for anyone who hasn't been following it if you would like to see how this van was built um, there is indeed a build series and I'll put a link to it somewhere in this video I'm not exactly sure how to do that it's up here or up here something like that but um, the videos are there uh, the rest of them will come and it will be from the very point of buying the van to its completed state I'll take every aspect of that from um, doing the plumbing to uh, sewing the cushions up. Okay now can I just say if you've liked the video, if you've enjoyed watching it, if you've liked the van, if you have any comments you would like to leave in the comments below that would always be appreciated and if you enjoy this type of video do consider subscribing to the channel as I say there's a whole build series uh, about halfway there the rest of it is yet to come and give the video a thumbs up if you liked it you know. Uh, thanks very much for watching in the next video well, I'm going to film that now actually, but a little bit, it'll be a while before I can get it uh, clipped up and everything. Uh, but in that video, 
I'm going to do a cost and material breakdown for this build. Um, so again, it's it's from a bare panel van to this. What materials did I use and how much did it cost? That's the next video. If you want to see that, do subscribe to the channel and we'll let you know when it goes up. Thanks very much for watching.